Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to restring your mandolin. I got a question about whether or not that was something that you can do on your own or you need to bring the instrument to a shop. It's really important that uh, if you play the mandolin, you know how to restring it. So um, there's two things that people are primary, primarily concerned about with restringing a mandolin. One is that they're, uh, they've heard that if you take all the strings off the instrument, it will damage the neck. Um, people say this about the guitar frequently. It's not true. There's no, there's no real concern with taking the strings off damaging the neck. The other thing that makes the mandolin a little bit more complicated is that the bridge is, uh, is not attached to the instrument. It's only held onto the instrument by the tension of the strings. So um, when you take the strings off, the mandolin uh, bridge will come off too. Um, now one way of dealing with that is to simply take off one string at a time and put in the new strings, or you can put in one string from each course, so one each of the GDAE strings, and then do the other set. <clears throat> um, but I prefer to take all the strings off at once, um, take the bridge off, and it gives me an opportunity to clean the instrument up. You can see this instrument is, is pretty dusty and lots of fingerprints and whatnot, um, and it's really hard to get a lot of these things cleaned um, underneath these strings. So I'm gonna take all the strings off and then um, and then restring it. So before I begin actually taking the strings off and putting the new ones on, I'm going to talk a little bit about what equipment we'll need to do it. Of course, we'll need a new set of strings. That's the first starting point, of course. Um, the other tools that we're going to use for this are a pencil or a pen or a sharpie or some writing implement that will actually mark the surface of your mandolin pair of pliers. I like these diagonal cut pliers that you can use um, for cutting the strings when we're all done. You may need a tape measure or a ruler of some sort um, and perhaps an eraser. Now last and certainly not least, I do not recommend doing this job without your cup of coffee. Before you remove the, the strings from the mandolin, you want to mark the location of your bridge. You can, uh, depending on the surface, you can use a pencil, uh, a pen, or a marker of some sort. Um, you, particularly with a marker, you may want to check somewhere on the instrument that you can um, put it on and then get it back off again. This instrument um, is very hard to get any markings on at all, but basically just mark each of the corners. So that later we'll know exactly where to put that instrument, uh, put that bridge. Okay, to begin with, first thing we're going to do is down here at the tailpiece, there's a cover that we're going to take off. You may not have a cover, you probably do, so we'll remove that cover, set that aside, and you can see how uh, the strings are attached to the tailpiece down here. Basically there are loops just going over knobs. It may be different on your mandolin, there's a, a lot of different ways this can be done, but this is a pretty common way. And then we'll just loosen up the strings. So detune it all the way down. And as you detune the strings, you can take them up from the tuning uh, post end and slip it after it's loose enough, slip it over a couple of times and then pull it out through the hole and take it off of the tailpiece down at this end and that's done. So I'm going to take all of these strings off I don't always keep the instrument flat on the table as I'm loosening the strings. I may pick it up, put it on my lap, uh, or move it elsewhere to make it more comfortable. So after you get the, uh, all the strings off, the bridge uh, will be loose. You can remove it, and you're going to want to check for the markings that you put on the instrument for where the bridge belongs. We'll set that aside for now. Um, note on, on most mandolins you're going to find that it's pretty obvious where the bridge was even if you hadn't marked it uh, because there's going to be discoloration and whatnot. 
So the next thing that I'm going to do is clean up the instrument. It's, it's, this one is a terrible dusty mess. So I'm just going to use, in this case I've just got a dry rag. Um, it, usually I'll want to use a, a very slightly damp rag, not enough to leave any water behind. Um, but I'll use a slightly damp rag and then come back around when I'm done and use a dry rag to get off anything, uh, any water that did happen to get left behind. So I clean the body, obviously, especially getting anywhere that I can't get to when the strings are on. I'm going to wipe down the fretboard. And the headstock is the part that usually gets most dusty and is most difficult to clean with the strings on. And then we'll begin to put the strings back on. I generally like to start with the thick strings first and work my way across. Um, no particular reason for that. That's just the way I happen to do it. Um, again, with, uh, with the situation... Ooh, we want to clean our bridge too, don't we? Um, with the fact that you have a bridge that isn't attached to the instrument like it would be on a guitar, guitar saves us this trouble a little bit. Um, as we restring it, we're going to need to make sure that we get the bridge back where it belongs. Initially, you can just set it on the instrument and um, sort of approximately set that into the correct notch at both ends. Now, a trick that I like to use when I'm stringing any instrument is I start out with the uh, tuning post such that the hole in the post is perpendicular to the neck. When I put the string on, I wrap it pretty tightly. I pull tightly across here. I wrap it one time around, and then I push down on the string with my finger here to keep the string as close to the headstock as I can as I then push the string through the post hole from the inside. There we go. So I put it through, and I keep that string as tight as I can as I do this. The reason that I like to do it this way, and then I pull this as tight as I can, what it does is it gives us a nice consistent wrapping here, and, um, and I don't have to wind too much to get it all in place. So I'm going to push down on this string to make sure that as it winds on, it winds below the string that came before it. So I tighten it up just a little bit. And that's good enough for now. I'm going to go back and check the position of the, of the bridge and get it a little bit closer to where it, um, where it belongs. And then I'm going to take one string from the next course. So again, turn that post, wrap it once around, hold it in place. And run the string through. Pull it tight. And then tighten it up a little bit. The bridge is looking pretty much on the right spot. We work our way across. Um, the A and the E strings, which typically are not wound strings, um, these are a lot slipperier. So as they go onto the tuning post, um, rather than winding them once, I, I wind them on twice. Um, otherwise, you can sometimes have them slip through the hole, and that makes your life a lot less pleasant. So instead of just winding this onto the post one time, I'm going to wind it around once. Whoops. One time, a second time around. So I'm coming back around and working the second half of each course. Again, I'm putting the strings through the correct notches in each the bridge and the 
um, nut as I go along. Okay, I have all the strings on now. I have not tuned the instrument at all. It's very much out of tune still, and that's on purpose because I now need to come back to make sure the bridge is in the right position. And um, it's just about right now. As you tighten the strings, it may shift the bridge a little bit. So as we go to tune up the instrument, um, it may be that we need to adjust that a little bit more. But it's sitting flat on the surface of the instrument. And um, it's squared away where it used to be. I'm going to start tuning it up. And as I tune it, the bridge may shift a little bit. Um, so we may have to continue working on keeping that in place. But I will get out my tuner and bring the, bring the instrument back to its proper pitch. So I got one string in each course set. Again, I'm going to go back and check the bridge, make sure it's where it needs to be. And then I'll tune the other course. Not quite perfect, but I'm just about there. So uh, I'm going to go back once again, make sure that that bridge is sitting properly on the surface and that it's in the right position. Everything looks good. So I'll do a final tuning uh, and then replace the tailpiece cover. Um, actually, I can do that and then do the final tune. Okay, I've got the tailpiece cover back on, the strings are on and tuned, the bridge is in the right place. Um, when you first put the strings on, uh, they'll stretch sometimes for a day or two. Um, and they basically are going to settle in, the instrument won't stay in tune very well. I'm going to intentionally stretch the strings on my own. I'm going to reach down underneath and I'm going to pull on them a little bit, pull in a couple different directions. Don't want to pull so hard that I snap something, but I do want to give it a fairly good tug to make sure that anything that's kind of not settled into place up here on the headstock or uh, anywhere else that it just kind of settles into where it needs to be and it will stay there. So I'm going to do this with each course. And this should take the instrument somewhat back out of tune. And so after doing this, I'm going to tune the instrument a second time. And then I'll stretch the strings again, tune it a third time. And I'll do that until the instrument pretty well stays in tune each time that I do that. Um, so after stretching the strings several times and retuning, I'm confident that we're not going to get much more slipping going on up here. So I'm going to cut, uh, cut off all the extra, I want to cut it pretty near to the post because the remaining wire can be um, painful if it sticks into you. But of course I want to make sure that I don't cut the string that I'm intending to uh, remain behind while I'm doing this. And voila, we have now restrung the mandolin. I hope this was helpful to you, and uh, feel free to leave any comments or questions. I'd be happy to answer them for you. Have a great day.